Today my sermon title is going to be uh, looking ahead and for all of us that is that look at heaven that God is even now preparing a place for us. The book of Revelation is that vision that the Apostle John saw and wrote down and uh, I'd like to read a little bit of, the Re of Revelation from the 21st chapter and this is that vision of what heaven is and what he saw and he tried to write down to describe what he saw and it says beginning in verse 9 it says one of the seven angels who had the seven bulls full of the last the seven last plagues came and said to me come and I'll show you the bride the wife of the lamb and he carried me away in the spirit to a mountain great and high and showed me the holy city Jerusalem coming down out of heaven from God it shone with the glory of God and its brilliance was like that of a very precious jewel like Jasper clear as crystal it had a great high wall with 12 gates and with 12 angels at the gates on the gates were written the names of the 12 tribes of Israel. There were three gates on the east, three on the north, three on the south, and three on the west. The wall of the city had 12 foundations, and on them were the names of the 12 apostles of the Lamb. The angel who talked with me had a measuring rod of gold to measure the city and its gates and its wall. The city was laid out like a square, as long as it was wide. He measured the city with the rod and found it to be 12,000 stadia in length. And that's about 1,400 miles in our measurement today. Uh, and as wide and high as it is long, he measured the wall and it was 144 cubits thick. And that's about 200 feet. It was, two, it was 144 cubits thick by man's measurement, which the angel was using. The wall was made of jasper and the city of pure gold, as pure as glass. The foundations of the city walls were decorated with every kind of precious stone. The first foundation was jasper, the second sapphire, the third chalcedony, the fourth emerald, the fifth sardonyx, the sixth carnelian, the seventh chrysolite, the eighth beryl, the ninth topaz, the tenth chrysopase, the seventh, uh, the eleventh jacinth, and the twelfth amethyst. The twelve gates were twelve pearls, each gate made of a single pearl. The street of the city was of pure gold, like transparent glass. I did not see a temple in the city because the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are its temple. The city does not need the sun or the moon to shine on it for the glory of God gives it light and the lamp is and the lamb is its lamp. The nations will walk by its light and the kings of the earth will bring their splendor into it. On no day will its gates ever be shut for there will be no night there. The glory and honor of, of the nations will be, will be brought into it. Nothing impure will ever enter it, nor will anyone who does what is shameful or deceitful, but only those whose names are written in the book of life, the Lamb's book of life. This is God's holy word. <coughs> Excuse me. Today is Old Year's Day, and today we are at a point in time that each year we look back to see what the past year has been. I'm sure you have seen that in the news as they've analyzed and uh, reanalyzed the last year and all the good and all the bad and everything else. But it's also a time for looking ahead because we are on the we are on the precipice of stepping into a new year, into the future. And that's something that we also uh, look at each year. It's a time for reflection when we get to this day, and we do it every year. 
Life is like we imagine it to be. When they take these polls and you see the results, there's always somebody that are in, that are in favor, and there's always somebody that are uh, that are against it. There's always somebody that's positive, and there's always somebody that's negative. They're on all sides of that, and so uh, analyzing and, and looking at what we see is something that really is human, and it's something that is important for all of us. I know that when we have taken trips, and especially when you get into the wide open spaces of Colorado or Wyoming or some of those other states like that, they have these vista points along the side of the highway. And if you pull in there and take the time to stand and to look, it is amazing what you can see. As far as your eye can see, it's just unbelievably grand and beautiful. And some of the time that's just right up close to us and it's still beautiful. And it's something that, that we do as we uh, get into the new year. We are reflecting on what has been and what will be and what, what is out there for us that can be and will be so beautiful. I was looking at a clip that came on Facebook or one of those kind of things on the computer this week. And it was a picture, hey, some of you may have seen it, it was a picture or a clip video of, of a couple of, I'm gonna just say they were like rangers in the park or something, I don't know what they were, but they had a big cage and they were way up on the top of this cliff at the edge and in that cage was an eagle and they were releasing the eagle. I guess the eagle had been injured and they had nursed it back to health and now they opened the cage out toward the vast beyond and they stood way in the back because they didn't want to be too close to that eagle, I don't think, when it was free. And that eagle got out of the cage and it stretched its wings like I should know what I'm doing here. But when it looked out there, it didn't really want to go either, not yet. And it kind of hopped this way a little bit and it looked again and stretched its wings and it hopped a little bit back and finally it took off. And the camera followed that eagle as it just soared out. What it was made to do, how God designed it for it to do, it was beautiful. And in a way that's what it is like for us. We look ahead ready to soar for what God has prepared for us in the coming year and beyond. Life is like that. We have things that we do in preparation for what lies beyond. And invariably, those things that we do are short-term and what lies beyond is beautiful and long-term and even eternal. Graduation day is like that. Students have been in class, they've been studying for a season, whatever that season has been. And now it comes time where they say, you learned what you can learn here. Now it's time for you to go out and spread your wings and soar. Whatever it is beyond graduation, employment, maybe some more study and greater uh, detail. But the goal is to graduate and to get out and be a positive asset in your society. I remember my middle son was in early stages of college. He still didn't know what he wanted to do in life. And so he was going through the motions and he was taking the classes that you have to take. And then he came to me one time at the start of his sophomore year and he said, Dad, I think I know what I want to do, but you're not supposed to enjoy your work, are you? <laughs> I said, son, if you can find something you love, go for it. That's the best way to live your life is enjoying what you're doing. Future is something that we should enjoy. As we, as we step out into the new year, 
Look for the positive. Look for the things in your life that you can do and be an asset to others that you can really, really have fun at. By the way, he's an airline pilot today. Every time I call him, I never know where he's going to be. Dad, I'm in Hong Kong. Oh, we visited Europe today. We're in South Africa. They're all over the place, he and his wife. <coughs> it's, uh, it's really something to watch them enjoy their life as they're doing what they love. A wedding is something like that. There's that dating and courting that goes in one day. Will you marry me? Yes, I will. And then the planning starts. <coughs> Forgive me. And the planning starts all working up to that special day. And everything is exactly the way that they want it except for that one mishap that they'll always remember and talk about. <clears throat> but the wedding is only a stepping off point into married life. It is in married life where relationships deepen and families are created. It is out there beyond now, that one special event, that is there for making life better. <clears throat> in a marriage, the husband makes his wife's life better. And a wife makes his husband's, her husband's life better. That's the goal. That's what we do in that beyond from the, be from the immediate event. December 31st is like that. There's a new year ahead and we are stepping off into it tomorrow yeah we look back yeah we reflect but we look ahead at the possibilities that are there for us i think a lot of people make new year's resolutions many of you probably have done that all the things in your life that you want to get rid of or change or make different in the coming year my experience is that most New Year's resolutions get about that far until New Year's Day and then they're done. What we're talking about is something much more profound as we head into the future. It's life. We're heading into life, but life is also just like all those other events that we described. Life is a preparation, it is a stepping off place into the afterlife. We are preparing for heaven. That's what it is that we are doing in our lives. We are living our lives following Jesus Christ. We are living our lives attempting to be the people that God wants us to be, enjoying life, making it better all around us. But knowing that heaven awaits. And heaven is something that does not have a reference point. What is heaven? Not one of us really knows. We have the promise of God. We have the promise that Jesus taught that there is a heaven and he's preparing a place for us and it's going to be wonderful. And John, when he writes these letters of that vision that he saw, it's amazing all of the things, the jewels, and the, he used the most, the most supreme words that he could imagine to describe what he was seeing. And I think if you talk to John, he would say, I still was way short of what it was. There's gems and jewels listed in there and I think three or four of them three of them maybe people today don't even know what they are they have no clue whether it's something that was in heaven that John saw and the angel said this is these or, or whether he imagined them to be that or it's still something that's going to be discovered at some point in the future we don't know what it is heaven is without a reference point I like to say that Heaven is a place <clears throat> where you and I are going to be able to smell colors. 
Heaven is a place where there are no constraints. We're going to have a body similar to what Jesus had when he was raised from the dead. And he just walked through walls and appeared in rooms where his friends were. Can you imagine that? I can't. i got to be honest with you. It is something that is absolutely amazing. And my observation is this. That Christians believe in heaven. And yet are not aware of even a, a fraction of how beautiful it's going to be. Can you imagine something that spectacular and not being here striving to get there? To do everything we can in our lives to be the people that God wants us to be, to live for him, to think about him day after day, constantly be in communication with him through prayer, to live our lives the way he wants us to live them because of where we're headed and who we're going to be with and what it's like there. And you and I can't possibly know. Or can we? Harriet and I were out at a play in uh, Yucaipa a couple weeks ago. We went with some good friends of ours from Redlands that we knew for a long, long time already. There are eight of us. One of the ladies my age had told me this story long, long ago when I was her pastor. But I sat next to her at the play and during the intermission I said, tell me again about that experience you had. It was 51 years ago, she was 24 years old, and if any of you are good at math, that means I'm 75, and so is she. So now you got that out of the way. She was 24 years old. She had a husband, she had a daughter. She was pregnant with who would become her son. And one night at home, during that pregnancy, she started to get a headache that just got worse and worse and worse. And it wasn't long and she became paralyzed. And then she became blind. And her husband picked her up and brought her to the car, drove her to emergency. They admitted her into the hospital. And as she was telling me this, she began to just violently shake again and tears streamed down her face. And the doctor had told her husband, there's nothing we can do. We can't save her or the baby. And she said that she went through a place just a distance away she said it was the most amazing warmth and light and peace she had ever experienced, ever. She said it was beautiful. And then she came back. And her son is 6'5 and strong and has a family leading a great life and she has another daughter beyond that. But she went there and she said, oh Leon, it was so beautiful and so wonderful. I can't even describe to you what it was like. My grandfather was a minister of the word of Jesus Christ. And as he lay on his deathbed, in his, in his bed, and I was not there, so I'm getting this only from those who were there, and that was my uncle and my dad. And as he laid there, 
he opened his eyes and he said, oh, I'm still here. I just saw all of my relatives and I'm going there to be with them. And then he closed his eyes and he died. And that uncle that I just told you about, five, six, eight years ago, he was deathly ill and admitted to Redlands Hospital. And they didn't expect him to live. They gave him like 5% chance kind of thing. And it was, he was really ill. And he was telling me, and I asked him this again, to, this is last week to refresh my memory. And he said, as I was laying there in the hospital, everything became foggy. And he says, I just was transported. It was like I traveled and I got to a wall and I went through the wall. And he said on the other side, it was nothing but light, pure light. And he says, it's so beautiful. I had such a sense of peace that I couldn't describe it to you if I had to. And then I came back. And he says, I for months I felt so guilty of having to see that and then have to come back. But you know what? He is not afraid of death at all today because of that experience. And another family friend, this one again was told to me by someone who so I'm once removed from hearing it, but it was a family friend and just before her passing, she opened her eyes and said to the family who were gathered around, I just saw Jesus at the top of the stairs. And he said to me, come to me, there's room for all of you. And I'll tell you this one too. If you might think, well, yeah, that's, that's Pastor Leon. He's a spiritual guy, and I got news for you. That's not the whole truth. But, of course, he's seen those things. He's heard those things, but not me. Yesterday, I went to the gym. Now, don't be thinking a lot of good stuff about me, because I haven't been there in two years. <laughs> <laughs> And my muscles really hurt today. But I was on the treadmill, and right next to me was a friend of mine who came in after I had been there. And we were the only two there, and I knew that he had had some physical issues in his life where he was really ill. And so I said to him, you really had some experiences with almost dying. I said, did anything happen to you? in a spiritual nature during those times? And he said, oh yes. He said, as I lay there, a voice, I didn't see God, but I heard the voice and I know it was God. And God said to me, are you going to change? And he responded to God and said, oh yes, I am, I'm going to change. And God said to him, you're right, but it's not gonna be easy came back. You too, you know people who have had those times in their life where they were kind of wavering between life and death, maybe some of you even. Ask them, did you experience anything? And they're going to say to you either, no, I didn't, or yes, I did, and this is what it is. And you too will know firsthand from someone's mouth what it is that lies ahead for us. Now I'm sharing today with you something that I don't know anything about really. It's only what people have told me. People, as followers of Jesus Christ, one thing I know and that is that we can count on his word. Believe what he said. I go to prepare a place for you and I'll come back 
and I'll get you. God has never lied to us. He's never walked us down a trail, down a path. Today is the end of this year, and the next year lies ahead. And it has great possibilities for us if we grab them. As Christians, our future is absolutely, absolutely amazing. That's the promise of God. And so I say to each of us, believe this truth and live in peace. Amen? Amen. Amen. God bless you all. Uh, let's pray. We give you thanks, Lord, for your word. Many times what we read in scripture flies over our head because it's so amazing and almost seemingly impossible. And yet you are faithful to your word, O oh God. So we thank you that we can lean on you, that we can trust you, and that we know that one day we will be with you in glory. We thank you today for that truth. Amen. Would you stand with me as we sing the hymn, Oh, That Will Be Glory, number 530, 539. 